All right, so now we're going to get into acceleration. We've talked about velocity. We've talked about how to calculate velocity, which is the distance divided by time. Um, that will also give you the average speed or average velocity. And we said that with velocity that it also needs a direction. And so we have that direction that can either get, be given to us as a cardinal direction of north, south, east, and west or it can be a positive or negative sign. We've talked about velocity um, in graphing motion and that the slope of a distance versus time graph is velocity. All right, that's what the slope represents, is velocity. And we've talked about how you divide with the distance divided by time is the same as the rise over, over the run because the distance is the rise and time is the run. All right, so now we're going to get into acceleration. And acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes. Now remember when, we, when we're talking about motion and, and speed and average speed and such, when we brought up the word rate, it had to do with time. And so time will be on a denominator, as we've said before. And it will be on a denominator in relationship to velocity. All right, so means that our change in velocity, because acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes. So this triangle sign is, mean, is stands for delta, which delta means change. And so we have the change in velocity divided by time, which is measured in seconds, equals our acceleration. Um, and then how we find our change in velocity is that we take our final velocity, which VF stands for final velocity. The little f is in subscript as final. And we subtract that by our initial velocity, which are capital V and our little i in subscript, which is initial. And then we divide our time by that. So this is the, the formula for it, is you have VF minus VI over time or over seconds, however you want to write that is, is fine. And um, we can use that to, to remind ourselves of what the units are. The units for velocity, remember, are meters per second. That is the unit for velocity. All right, so now we come to uh, an example problem of somebody that's going out for a walk. Um, their initial velocity is zero meters per second. I'll just bring this down a little bit more. All right, so their initial velocity is zero meters per second. Their final velocity is five meters per second. And they, they have this change in velocity in two seconds. So we have all of the keys that we need to find the rate at which velocity changes. We have our final velocity, which is five meters per second. We subtract that by zero because that was our initial velocity. And then we're dividing that by two seconds because that is the time that it took for us to actually reach five meters per second. Now we, we come to this and now we're having to divide. So first we, we have to remember about math class and how we, we divide and how we're dividing with, with fractions. So first of all, uh, the 5 and the 2, we don't have to worry about fractions. And so 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, OK? Which brings us to what do we do with the seconds now? Because seconds is basically over 1, and we can't get rid of that quite yet. So we need to, to take care of that. And to do that, we find the reciprocal of that. So we'll just mark that out. And then I'm back to where where we where I started from before, but going along with this video, we have uh, two point five, okay, and bring it along our meters per second because that was the unit, that was our velocity, and we still have the seconds over time. All right, so we'll just write seconds, and we have the understood one there. Now remember in math class, we, we can't leave a fraction like this. Uh, we, we should clear the fraction. And the way that we do that is we have to multiply by the reciprocal. Like, well, 
what's the reciprocal of this? Because 1 s or 1 second is technically over 1. And so we flip that around which then will have 1 over s rather than s over 1 and we'll multiply that there which will cancel these out and all of that will go down to, to just 1 and we multiply the top by 1 over s alright because whatever you do to the to the bottom you also have to do to the top and then we'll just bring our number over because that's that's all we're, we have to do with that now we multiply straight across so we have meters m times 1 is, is 1 meter so you can just bring over your unit and then s times s now you might think well how does that work out and that's going to be seconds squared because whenever you ha you're multiplying variables you're basically adding your exponents so if you have an understood one as your exponent and an understood one as your exponent you bring that over and you add those together and you get uh, meters per second squared all right so meters per second squared is the unit for acceleration all right unit for acceleration meters per second squared that is very important and this is a derived unit remember we've talked about derived units before okay um, let's look at this another way if we go back to the 2.5 point five we had meters per second and then we had seconds on bottom alright this would be the same thing as um, meters per second per second all right, it's the same thing as meters per second squared. This is just the long version of that. And remember, we, we worked out the math to, to get meters per second squared here. All right, and so our, our answer for this, for this problem back up here, is 2.5 meters per second squared. That is our acceleration for this guy that started from a complete stop and got up to 5 meters per second. All right. That is how you work an acceleration problem. You'll need to know the formula for that, so I, I suggest you learn that. And in our next video, we will talk about how to graph acceleration.